first of all, with any statement about Russia, I always also immediately state my the, the disclaimer, and which is uh, the thing that I always say is that whatever you say about Russia, the opposite is always true as well. According to you, what is the biggest misconception that there is of Russia in the West at the moment? I mean, you've dealt with the Russian businessmen, the Western businessmen. Um, I think stereotypes exist on both sides. So let's take a look at the Western side first, and then we'll go to the Russian side. So what's the biggest stereotype or misconception of Russia? Well, I would say nowadays, um, and especially, you know, with all the bad press that Russia is getting, uh, in the West, people are confusing politics with people. The image that Russia as a political entity, as a political nation on the world stage projects is not very positive. And um, foreigners think that that image also applies to Russian individual people. In addition to that, always uh, I've noticed that foreigners think that Russians are very closed. Uh, they're very grim. They're not very polite. Uh, they're very tough. Uh, but uh, at the same time, when I have foreign guests over here in Moscow and I introduce them to my friends, you know, they're just um, uh, surprised that Russians actually want to get to know them. You know, they're very warm. They're very welcoming. They're very hospitable. They will do anything for you. Friendships in Russia, they are, you know, very long lasting. You have these unconditional relationships. Uh, and uh, and this is something that... Um, that, that Westerners don't know and they actually don't believe it until they experience it themselves. At the same time, when Russians look at, uh, at Westerners, you know, the, the image is also sort of, you know, tainted by politics and, and by the media. So um, Russians really think that most foreigners, they are, they are Russophobes and they're, they're, they have negative attitudes towards Russia. Whereas at the same time, you know, when I speak about Russia, abroad. Yeah, so I'm in either the US or I'm in Europe or I'm in the Netherlands and I talk about um, uh, about Russia and Russians. I, I notice that the foreigners, they, they're really very interested. You know, they want to know about Russia. They want to know about Russians. Uh, they want to learn about uh, what's going on in this, uh, in this country. Uh, Russians don't really understand this. They don't see this. So they think that uh, the, the, the foreigners, they have a negative attitude and a very antagonistic attitude towards, um, uh, towards Russia. And that's where this Russian siege mentality comes from. Uh, so, so the whole world is against us. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually not that, that, that case. You know, the, the, in the Netherlands, you know, Dutch people, they are not scheming and plotting uh, how to win, you know, the world war against Russia, right? I mean, they... they 99 out of 100 people that I speak, they're really interested. And they say like, oh, wow, interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, tell me more. Um, so on both sides, there are these misconceptions that, that really are only um, uh, taken away by providing information, by allowing people to learn about each other, to have exposure to each other in the, in the, in the real world. And that is why it's such a pity that, you know, you have this widening rift between Russia and the West, it's a pity why, uh, that, that um, there's less and less, you know, economic interaction, cultural interaction. There's less interaction of students. There's less academic interaction. And these are all things that, uh, that, that, um, that we're really missing now and that are really crucial in, in bringing Russians and, and, let's say, Europeans together. I, I very well remember Moscow during the, the World Championship of, uh, of football. And Moscow was just a different city. Yeah? And, and because then, you know, Russians switched on their, the, the hospitality part of their brain. They said, okay, we are now the hosts. We have all these foreign guests. You know, and I saw all these, you know, uh, foreigners who were being, uh, you know, uh, taken by the hand by, by Russians who would show them where to go and what to do. Uh, even when you would go down in the metro, People would smile, people would be open, uh, people would be friendly. So, you know, Russians, they know how to do it. We need to have more World Cups in uh, at least one World Cup per year in Russia. And then, uh, you know, everything will be, will, will be all right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I really, really enjoyed that period because it did uh, showed a lot of uh, uh, a lot of good things and positive things about the Russian character to the world and also gave the Russians the opportunity to see other people because, as um, you rightly said at the beginning of our conversation, 
there are misconceptions on both sides. And uh, uh, as long as we uh, keep open uh, conversations and openly look at each other without prejudice and biases, then you know we are likely to move forward and uh, we will build more bridges. Russia has this unique geography because part of it is in Asia. In fact, the largest part of it is in Asia and uh, part of it is uh, in Europe. So the Ural Mountains um, serve as the natural border between the two. But Russia is not you know, fully Asian and not fully European. But if you would ask any Russian, they would and you would ask the Russian, you would put the Russian in front of the choice. Like, are you are, is Russia part of the European family or is Russian part of the Asian family? Russians would always say that Russia is part of the European family. And, and uh, I really believe that as uh, as well. So, um, yeah, I hope that that all these misunderstandings and these preconceived preconceived ideas and these stereotypes that, that you know, that we'll be able, uh, thanks to people like you, we'll be able to, to dissolve them. And people like you as well, because I was uh, just uh, thinking while uh, listening to you, you know, what can people like us do uh, to build more bridges, to destroy the stereotypes and misconceptions and build uh, bridges? Because as you rightly put it, uh, politics, uh, if we put politics on uh, one side and people on the other, because people uh, will find the common ground much faster than the politicians. And uh, that's sure. Or it's important to have conversations like this one, like the one we are having, in order to see each other's positions and to actually look at each other and say, well, we can talk to each other. So it's certainly a step forward. You know, Russian culture is, is very different from, let's say, Northwest European or American culture. Um, in a sense that, or in many senses, obviously, but, but let's take uh, the sense that uh, in Western European American culture, as you know, also from your experience, you're allowed to make mistakes. Yeah, mistakes are welcomed. So even in schools, you know, it's better to try something, better to make, to take initiative, better to offer, you know, an answer or a solution and make a mistake than, than not to do anything at all. Uh, Russia has a culture, and this is uh, in schools, it is in uh, in education. The corporate culture is very much geared, it's, you know, it's sort of a punishment culture. So it's very much geared towards uh, avoiding mistakes. And that is why people would rather do nothing, so rather not do something, than do something and run the risk of making a mistake. And this is also <clears throat> uh, the, the, the same with language. So Russians who would sort of, you know, talk English on their holidays when they don't feel a lot is at stake, in business, they would prefer not to talk English because they don't want to. Uh, they want don't want to make a mistake. They don't want they they don't want to sort of as they feel make a fool out of themselves, um, and and so they they rather take the safe um, uh, side and and not talk English at all. So when I came here in '94, I just started to talk. Uh, you know, first a, a few words, then a few verbs. But the funny thing about Russian uh, about the Russian character mm -hmm. is that. When I would speak like 26 years ago, my three words of Russians, of Russian, Russians, they would be very happy, you know, and, and, you know, even the three words, and they would immediately say like, oh, you speak fluently, and it's so amazing, and so on. I said, no, 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 I just speak like these three words. But so the Russians are much more generous in dealing with foreigners who speak bad Russian than they actually are to themselves when they speak reasonably okay English, you know, so, so they're much more strict towards themselves than they are to foreigners. This is an interesting, it's an interesting characteristic. It's a very interesting characteristic. And uh, in some ways, it reminds me of the Japanese way, you know, uh, because in Japan, there is a similar attitude towards mistakes and uh, people are perfectionists. They're, they're, they are brought up in such a way that they have to be the best. They have to constantly improve something uh, about their studies, about their work, etc. And yeah, I think I would agree with you here because Russians do not like to talk about their mistakes openly, uh, be it a business environment or uh, in daily lives.